So our research question is, how much does uh, the genetic makeup of a person determine the composition of the gut microbiome? And this is important because we know that the gut microbiome influences various disease states, uh, and paramount amongst those uh, is metabolic disease and obesity. And if we can understand how the microbiome is shaped, it gives us a novel therapeutic target in uh, addressing these chronic inflammatory diseases such as metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, and uh, obesity and associated diseases. So when we think about what determines the composition of the gut microbiome, we know that environmental influences, and these include diet and lifestyle, are very, very important but we knew almost nothing about the genetic composition of the individual and how that affects the microbiome. And that is what we were interested in finding out. How much does host genetics influence the microbiome and which specific components of the microbiome respond to differences in uh, the genetic composition between individuals? Our approach was to, to use a, a classical genetics approach, which is to study human twins. And uh, you can use the fact that identical twins, that are, which are, of course, born at the same time, ha share the same genome, comparing those to fraternal twins born at the same time, which share only half of a genome because they're more like normal brothers and sisters. So we teamed up with uh, the Twins UK registry, which is run out of King's College London, and they have a population of 15,000 twins that they work with and they asked their participants if they were interested in working with us on this particular study, and if they were, to provide us with a stool sample. So we received stool samples from over a thousand twin pairs. Um, some of them provided several uh, stool samples, so we could actually look at uh, stability over time. And what we do then is take the stool sample, extract the DNA, and sequence the 16S ribosomal RNA gene diversity in that sample. What this gene is, is the gene that's contained on the bacterial or kale chromosome, and you can think of it as a barcode uh, that tells you what kind of bacterium that is. So for each sample, we generate on the order of 80,000 of these sequences, and when we look through the sequences, it's a, it's a big mix of sequences, of different um, variations, um, and you can tell what types of bacteria were there and in what relative proportion. So now for each of the several thousand stool samples belonging to these twins, we have what type of bacteria there and in what proportion. And that's the information that we use to compare the microbiomes of the twins. So the first finding was a list of the microbes in the gut that are heritable, meaning uh, when, you, when you look uh, in the identical twins, you get more similar levels than when you look in the fraternal twins. That means there's a genetic component to their abundances. So there's something in the human genome that is setting the levels of these particular taxa now that are in this list. Now, the very top of the list is a family of bacteria called the Chrysanthemiaceae. And if you look at uh, the other members of the list, what we found is they co-occur together. And the family Chrysanthiaceae and the, the members of that family are at the set, they're the key players. They're at the center of this group of bacteria. So that was also very interesting to us that the things that are genetically determined by the host also tend to co-occur. The third finding was uh, we found that if you look at lean versus obese individuals in our study, the lean individuals on average had more of this consortium. So they had more of the Chrysanthemiaceae family and the things that it co-occurs with. And finally, we looked in previously published data sets and looked to see where these taxa had been seen before, where these bacteria had been seen before in other studies. And what we're finding is that it's a general theme that there's more of these in lean people. So it wasn't just in our population, but if you look in other studies, other populations, Chrysanthemiaceae and the things that it co-occurs with are generally more abundant in lean people than obese people.
So here we have this association between Christens Liaceae, the things it co-occurs with, this nice consortium, and uh, a lean phenotype in the humans. And we want to ask, if the, is this a causal relationship or not? So we turn to using uh, germ-free animals to test this. Now, germ-free germ mice is what we use, are born and raised aseptically in bubbles in the laboratory. So all, everything that they experience is sterilized. The air is sterilized, the water is sterilized, the food is sterilized, the bedding is sterilized. And it, amazingly enough, they can live this way without any microbes whatsoever. And this gives us an opportunity to now inoculate them with the microbes that we want in order to see what happens to the physiology of the animal. And what we did was we took a fecal sample from an obese donor that lacked the Chrysanthiaceae, and we gave that to a number of mice. And then we took the exact same uh, fecal, uh, fecal samples and we added a cultured member of the family. We added Chrysanthiaceae minuta that we grew in the laboratory. We added that to the, uh, the fecal sample from the obese donor and we gave that to mice. So you have mice that just get fecal material from the obese donor and then mice that have chrysanthinella added to it. Those that got chrysanthinella added to it are thinner than those that don't get the chrysanthinella supplement. So now this is showing us that just by adding this bacterium in, we can see a change in uh, the adiposity or the, 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 the body composition of the animals. And uh, that tells us that there's a direct causal relationship between the presence of the chrysanthinella and the body fat content of the host that has that in, it, in its gut. So we started out this research asking how do human genes influence the composition of the microbiome? And what we ended up with finding that the genes influence the composition of the microbiome, which then influence phenotype. In this case, body, comp body fat composition. And uh, what, what it means for us, I think, is that instead of thinking that genes influence body composition maybe directly, that they're working through the microbiome. And the microbiome is something that's easy to get at, and it might be, uh, it's certainly much easier to alter than the human genome itself. And so if you're an individual that has a genotype that gives you a low level of chrysanthinella, for instance, it might be very easy to just take chrysanthinella as, a, as a, an oral supplement in order to make you look like someone that's genetically with a higher level of chrysanthinella, and that might help you maintain or promote or a lean phenotype. It might, it might perhaps help with weight maintenance, weight loss, we don't know yet. These are tests we still have to maybe try to carry out in humans. So for us to follow up on this work, there's a couple of different ways we're following up. Uh, of course, the scientists, we'd like to understand the mechanism. Uh, so we're conducting studies in mice to understand how Kristen Snella leads to a, a leaner phenotype in the, in the mouse model. Of course, we're very interested in uh, whether or not this could be useful in humans for an aid in weight loss or weight maintenance. And so we are planning uh, to, to try to perhaps give Christensenel as a probiotic in people and uh, starting with safety trials and so on and uh, mo moving this into uh, translational research and perhaps uh, human health in the end and using developing this uh, bacterium as a probiotic, which might be simple, maybe you just take it, or it might need its partners. And so we need to understand which of its partners in the consortium might need to go with it and how to support them once they're given to an individual. <laughs>